I'm very sad to start on your class today. The main goal of this class is to give you the basic principles and mathematics associated with deep learning, especially the generative AI and ChatGPT. So, 50% of uh, our class will be related to mathematics because you are very good in coding and there are a lot of open source uh, software so that you can easily implement AI algorithms. So, I'd like to give you the basic mathematics. And then, I will, I'm going to give you the introductory architecture of many different types of uh, AI, including CNN, RNN, GAN, or diffusion models, including the, the generative model. And also, I'm going to uh, give you the basic uh, concepts of reinforcement learning. I took a curriculum of AI graduate school at KAIST and this is a two year. Maybe uh, it is a combination of more than 10 different classes. So the advantage of this class is you're gonna taste most of the advanced uh, AI models in this class. In addition to that, I'm going to give you um, a chance to enjoy real project, engineering project to use the AI machine learning, such as circuit or device optimization or estimation. And so those are the basic goal of uh, this class. I hope you enjoy that. At the first uh, class, I'm going to give you the basic introduction of machine learning especially for the two or three weeks i'm going to give you very basics of the machine learning so i hope you pay good attention to that and i hope you enjoy that The main subject of class today is introduction of machine learning. First, I would like to give you the basic concept of machine learning. I would like to use this diagram to explain the basic concept of machine learning. The largest circle represents artificial intelligence and second circle represents machine learning And the smallest circle represents deep learning. Traditionally, we are using the terminology of artificial intelligence. And Usually, traditionally, artificial intelligence based on more than and rule. Usually, this artificial intelligence uh, research was done by psychologists or language experts and so on who observe human behavior and speech and expressions to understand or to, to derive the model. Model can be represented by a mathematical equations or flowchart or logic diagrams. And in some way, I would say it is rule-based.
it is fun to observe human behaviors and to derive the model or rule. But we engineers found out that there are certain limits to accurately predict human behavior. So artificial intelligence is a broad concept of an algorithm based on model or rule to simulate human behaviors. But it has certain limits because we cannot go inside of our brain. Uh, we may have MRI or CT to observe the, our brains scientifically, but the resolution of CT, X-ray or MRI is millimeter waves. We cannot go into molecular levels or synapse levels. I know that Elon Musk started a new company called Neuralink. They intend to put semiconductor chip implemented in your brain. I even just, I don't like that idea. I will never do that. Even though some people allow Elon Musk to put the semiconductor chip in your brain, semiconductor electrodes has certain dangers, millimeter or hundred, and the number of points of sensor could be less than hundred or thousand. But uh, our number of uh, uh, molecules or synapses in our brain could be billions of billions of numbers. So, scientifically, it is almost impossible. Now, this machine learning is a kind of black box approach. We never try to understand our brain or try, we never try to extract model or rule. Our brain is regarded as a black box. We just give in input data and we observe response. Actually, this response is probability. If you give a picture of some animals, it will give you certain probability distributions. It may have chance to be a cat 99% or it could be a lion or a tiger 1% or something like that it will give you a certain probability distribution function. By having huge number of iterations of forward propagation, and backward propagation, This black box is called Deep Neural Network. It is composed of perceptron. Each perceptron, maybe billion and billion number of uh, perceptron will be designed into this black box. And we give the input data and we observe the response. In the case of supervised learning, if the response is not correct, they update the parameters embedded into, in, in this perception. By having billions of billions of input data and response with forward propagation and backward propagation, we update the parameters inside this black box. And so, 
At the end, we found that this black box is becoming a smart brain. More smarter than human beings. This kind of approach is called machine learning. So there are three elements that are needed is that we need the input data and we have response and we have black box. The basic algorithm is how to design this black box and how to update this black box parameters using backpropagation. On Wednesday in this class, I'm going to talk about this backpropagation. This backpropagation is the most essential part of machine learning, including generative AI and reinforcement learning. Human being cannot go back to the past. Do you remember a movie called Back to the Future? Who is the uh, actor of the Back to the Future? Do you remember Tesla? Do you remember Tesla? Oh, Michael J. Fox. That uh, he has good two good things. I remember one is that he has uh, some. He, he still has the same wife as twenty years old. <laughs> He didn't change his wife. And uh, the second thing is, uh, he had, before the actual future movie, he had a family drama in 1988. The name of the drama was Family Tie. There was a female actress who was the sister of Michael J. Fox in the drama, but she was so nice person. Her last name is Justine, and because of that, I made my daughter's name Justine. Anyhow, uh, this class is recorded, so I cannot tell you so many stories about my personal life. After we turn up sometimes, we can talk about that. How to find a good uh, husband and wife. How to buy a what kind of a car we buy, or what kind of apartment we're going to buy, is really the probability. Sometimes you meet a new girl, and if you have good friend, she will introduce a nice person to you. And sometimes after a dating of one year or two, you are married. But husband and wife usually change. A lot after marriage. So it is kind of probability game to engage and to marry. So ask Black Box, who is the best guy for you? Okay. If sometimes you are not sure, bring him to my office. I will talk to him for 30 minutes and I will tell you if he is good to you or forget about him. Okay. <laughs> I have my own black box. I have my whole life of input and response. So I have, I have my own data and parameters, and I pick up them. Okay. Yeah. If you want to marry a good person, we never usually try to find a model or deliver or equations or use high simulation. High simulation will never give you uh, whether you are she is good or she is good. So equations and simulations are somehow useless in a large problem. Our brain is very big, big, big things. So this model-based or rule-based approach is useless. Now, AI now, ChatGPT can speak so many different languages, and even they can make an art. Yesterday, I uh, wrote a uh, recommendation letter to IEEE or some professors, 
and I wrote a first draft of English and I feel like this is a accomplished and I asked ChatGPT to revise it for me to make a better English. It, it is too good. My friend feel like I'm a wrong. Uh, this is not, not my letter. So I changed them. Uh, you remember 30,000 for temporary book, 33,000 book? More than. ChatGPT are using more than that level of uh, English. So, but in addition to that, it has to be able to speak English, Korean, Japanese, Chinese. So, the number of parameters are becoming huge and huge. So, this model size is becoming, model size is becoming bigger and bigger. Model size is bigger means that in the, the number of layers, on next Monday, I'm going to talk about more about this model size and layers and architectures. It is becoming more computing intensive. And the kind of uh, more the large size model is some, sometimes we are saying it is deep learning. I would say most pro proper description of our class is machine learning. In order to do the forward propagation and backward propagation in deep learning model, we need a lot of GPU and HDM memory. Because this, in this forward and backward propagation, there are a lot of parallel computing. So, Computer architecture and chip architecture and memory architecture has to be changed to support this black box. This black box has a lot of matrix calculations. And matrix calculation in general as parallel computing. So usually CPU is good for serial computing, but now we are in an era of parallel computing. Our laboratory research subject is more mainly around HVM. What is the definition of HVM? It's parallel uh, memory architecture used for mostly useful for parallel computing architectures. Usually GDDR memory that is being used for uh, computer graphics card. They usually have 32 IOs, but HBM has 1,020 IOs, and I believe that sooner or later it's gonna be doubled or doubled every two or three years. So probably after 10 years, the number of interconnection between GPU and HBM might be exceeding more than 10,000. That is because of this forward propagation and backward propagation. And forward propagation and backward propagation use a lot of matrix calculations and matrix calculation is most essential part of uh, mathematical manipulations in uh, machine learning. Because of that, we need a new architecture of GPU and HBM and supercomputer. Recently, you know that Sumi, our former student, came to our lab and gave us a dinner. Did you join that dinner? You do? At that time, I joked him that please give a dinner with a one stack of NVIDIA. At that time, it was $430 something, but our dinner was actually $300. So. You have stock option more than 1,000 stock of NVIDIA, so just pay dinner for one stock. But after a week, I think NVIDIA stock price is up more than 7% or 10%. And now uh, the NVIDIA stock price is about $470 or something. And some people suggest it may go to $1,500. You have some cash available for that. You can 
uh, open an uh, account and buy an NVPN. Why is that? Because of deep learning. Um, this is serious joke, but the, um, whether you buy the NVIDIA stock or something, it's up to you. I gave you very good information. I did. So, uh, I'd like to emphasize again is that Machine learning is black box approach. There are so many parameters to determine. In order to determine these parameters, we are doing the photo propagation and bandwidth propagation. And because of that, we're going to need uh, AI supercomputers. Some people believe that NVIDIA is a semiconductor company. I'm not. I think NVIDIA is AI supercomputer company. And somehow, they are designing chip and they are designing the hardware, AI supercomputer hardware, but their most strength is software stack. Instruction set architecture compiler to the framework and cloud service software. So some I believe that NVIDIA is black box solution company. There are three key technologies. At the end of class, teaching assistant Jong Hyun. Yeah, he will uh, give you the copy of this uh, syllabus. And if you have any question, maybe next in the next class or next week you can give me questions. There are, uh, I think, three important elements that enables is machine learning. First thing is AI algorithm. AI algorithm is mostly based on mathematics. Matrix calculations and nonlinear functions, statistics, probability theory, information theory, and sometimes differential equations. And especially phone propagation and backward propagation, that is the essential part of this black box training, is usually represented by a mathematics. Sometimes, even though basic element of deep learning is always the same, perception, photo propagation, and backward propagation, sometimes we have different uh, architecture. Depending on the post or target of your application, sometimes uh, deep learning architecture ha has three slightly different shapes. For example, for, for your automotive vehicle uh, driving, sometimes your camera has to have certain capability of object detection, and that kind of we have special type of uh, AI architecture. Sometimes your machine learning has to understand the speeches, and also she has to be able to write the text. And we have certain sequential models and so on. And but in the future, 
we're gonna have very big model. I would say it is fundamental model, AI model. It will have capability of viral text, so it can speak, and also it can uh, uh, draw art, and also it can make a music, or sometimes it can interact with you with uh, uh, emotions. So fundamental AI model will have many different uh, tasks, but all of them will be combined together uh, to be a single model. I think that's why our uh, AI model is becoming bigger and bigger, and we may need more and more for computers. I imagine that in 10 years later, everybody has to have their own supercomputer. In our lab, I found that 50% of our students have his car, am I right? Sometimes he can buy his car by his money or from mother and father money, or sometimes he can uh, earn money from banks. I think in the future, Better than having your car, you have to have your own supercomputer or GPU. One recently, NVIDIA introduced a new GPU, GPU, HBM computer board. I think the price will be more than you know, billion uh, one. So you have to buy them to be able to work, to find a job, to get married. It's gonna be a full Even though this seems to be a joke, I, I made a, usually make a good prediction. So one part of that is AI algorithm and architecture. Our class is mostly focused on this part. Second part is big data. Because we are using smartphone and automotive uh, vehicles, we are generating uh, CCTV, smartphone cameras, and YouTube. We are generating a lot of data, and instantly somebody will take that, those data and they will say for AI training. But in the future, right now, Internet might be the main source of big data, but in the future, I would say virtual virtual world might be the main space to generate the new data and collect new data. Some company name is Metaverse. Metaverse intention is to collect data in the virtual world from the human being because they want to have more strong machine learning. But in the case of virtual world, who is making data? Not human being. Computer simulation will generate big data. So again, by a step and step, uh, our AI machine learning is more heavily depending on the computer. Third part is computing power. In von Neumann architecture, we have processor and memory. Traditionally, we have different paths of uh, development and manufacturing. Memory starts from magnetic tape, CD-ROM, DVD, and now we have TM and SM and so on. And processor start with the vacuum tube and transistors and VSI and so on and so on. So we have two different devices. And in order to conduct uh, this black box full propagation and backward propagation, we're going to have many 
huge number of uh, matrix calculation. In order to do that, the data is stored in memory. These parameters and input data is stored in memory. But this calculation for propagation and backward propagation is conducted at GPU. So they have to bring the data from memory and calculate and restore the data to the memory. So recently, the computing performance is limited by the bandwidth between memory and GPU. So in, in terms of computing architecture perspective, we have to develop a new computer or semiconductor who has more bandwidth between memory and GPU. One solution is that, like a Cerebras in US company, they have 12 inch with the whole chip is becoming AI supercomputer. In that chip, 12 inch chip, they have C of SRAM, very high speed memory, and they put some uh, computing element in the C of memory. By doing that, they can minimize the power consumption and latency between processing element and memory element. Second approach is that we can put some computing element inside DRAM. But I'm not in that uh, supporting in that direction because DRAM is basically processing and device uh, is designed to maximize memory density. So because of that, computing performance is very low. And compiler and software ecosystem is not favorable for memory companies. Uh, my own approach is to put GPU and memory on the top of each other and put the through holes between them. Then we can make a design millions and millions interconnection between memory and GPU. And by doing that, this is a kind of three-dimensional packaging or three-dimensional IC, we can maximize the bandwidth between GPU and memory. I'm in that position, and I believe that we are going to be the winner. Both CPU GPU company can take the advantage, and memory company can take advantage, and if we can build a huge top story building on top of each other, they can communicate very well. But one problem is that there are so much, too much summer dissipations. How are we going to cool down this H uh, GPU and uh, memory on top of their place on top of each other? So, eventually, I believe that this will determine the power of AI. The size of AI and performance AI is becoming bigger and bigger. How are we going to support the computing power for them? That is going to change the landscape of our computing and semiconductor companies in the future. Computing power will be determined by memory and GPU and packaging and interconnection. And on top of that, you have to have a competitive software stacks on top of that. And uh, recently, I'm focusing on this how to innovate computing power in, in computing and semiconductor companies. So I'm, I would like to talk about the overall progr uh, uh, progress of our class. And at the beginning, I'm going to talk about basic principle. I'm going to talk about dim neural network, perceptron, and forward propagation.
this subject in neural network architecture perceptron for the propagation backward propagation activation function and cost function are the basic building block of a, a machine learning architecture so this week and next week i'm going to give you the mathematics associated with this concept and then based on this understanding i'm going to explore a basic machine learning model such as CNN is usually then I'm going to introduce the basic principles and architecture of specific models such as CNN, RNN, and STN. In these days, CNN, RNN, and LSTM is not being used any anymore. Five years ago, this was really a hot subject. Now, uh, these models are evolved to be a transformer. These models will be now in this recently these models are changed to be a transformer model. So I'm going to talk about uh, that model as well. And another important as I told you that in the in 10 years later, all these models will be combined together to conduct composite uh, act, uh, activities of machine learning. But right now, I'm going to give you the separate approaches. And also, I'm going to introduce the basic architecture of generative models such as variation autoencoder, GAN, and diffusion model. Some of you may have used the ChatGPT and DALI, especially DALI are based on diffusion model. So also we're gonna I'm going to give you all the mathematics and foundations and architecture to explain uh, these models. And then at the end of the class, I'm going to give you the informant learning. Reinforcement learning is initially used for AlphaGo. It is a kind of optimization algorithm. But by combining this optimization algorithm with these generative models, we can improve the performance of machine learning. So as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this class, I look at the curriculum of many courses at KAIST who, who is teaching a uh, class for AI. All these are usually separate classes, and uh, I'm, I have an ambition to cover all these subjects in a single class. Now, let's start with perception. Most fundamental building block of this machine learning is perceptron. And perceptron, each perceptron has uh, so many number of parameters and activation functions. And so training, this forward propagation and backward propagation means how to train perceptron. And in a large language model, we have billions of trillions of number of perception inside. So I'm going to start with the basic structure of perception in this class.
Uh, let's assume I have a vector input. Vector could represent text, image, or voice, whatever it is, the digital data. In this uh, class, to simplify the expression, I'm considering a case of three element vector. But actual real vector in machine learning training. I think the number of elements in a vector could be billions or billions of parameters. This is a, a simple case. If we have an input, it will be multiplied by a set of weight. And this Input and weight will be multiplied and added and will be input to activation function. And it's gonna have output. Usually, this output has a range of 0 to 1. This y is kind of probability distribution function. Sometimes it is close to 1 or sometimes it is close to 0. Depending on input and weight, output of this perception could be almost 0 or 1. And this number is propagated to next perception. And that perception is connected to next perception and perception. And in a layer, number of perception could be billions or billions. The main purpose of machine learning training is to determine W1 and W2 and W3 by having forward propagation and backward propagation. Let's assume that we have parameters, that is a billion number of parameters. And usually, mathematically, we think that if to, we want to determine W1, W2, W3, we need an equation of more than billion. That means we need more than a billion number of input data to determine W1 and W3. That's why in order to have more smarter and smarter multimodal AI, we have to have big number of data to determine W1, W2, and W3. So in a short time, we have to complete the training or inference for each person on a global surface. In order to support that, we need more supercomputing power. And probably in the future, everybody has to have their own GPU board. Now still, I'm talking about this perception. This is perception. Usually, for this activation function, we are using sigmoid function. We may have many different type of activation function, but usually we are using sigmoid function. And sigmoid function has this kind of shape.
saying that this perception is a really fundamental block of machine learning architecture and it has input and weight and the summation of multiplication and input and weight factor that is described simply by W1x1 plus W2x2 plus W3x3 that is the multiplication of input vector and weight vector this is the matrix multiplication to simplify the uh, explanation of concept I'm not I'm trying to use very complex matrix notations I'm going to use the scalar stick notations but I'm trying to give you the basic concept so multiplication of input vector and weight vector that product is actually this number and also in addition to that we usually have a bias this is also a unknown parameters w1 w2 w3 and b those are the parameters to determine and to be trained during the training process of back propagation and for propagation of black box. Usually, then this input is put into the sigmoid function. Sigmoid function is 1 divided uh, by 1 plus expression minus wx plus bias function. This graph is a symbolic graph saying that x-axis is x and y-axis is the sigmoid function output. If x is becoming larger and larger, it is reaching to a point near 1. If this x is really becoming negative, it's actually becoming near 0. Transition point is determined by B divided by W because if you put some simple mathematics crossing point will be determined by this B. So the main goal of training of machine learning is to determine W and B. So this is actually output of your perception, but maybe you may have real value. In the supervised learning, we know the answer and we teach them. In the case of AlphaGo, they play the game. And at the end of the game, they figure out it is a good or strong position or bad position. I would say that is why dash. That is obtained from experiences. I said that I can give you recommend uh, recommend certain good guy or good girls for your marriages because I have some experiences. Why dash? You will, if you believe in me, you have to believe why dash. If you don't believe me, throw that away. Anyway, this x is the real number. If she has a smiling face, he's a good guy. He is uh, uh, behaving. There might be some parameters. Our life is more complicated, uh, but. He, he, he can sometimes, uh, if I speak for this, I can give you many examples, but let's assume that this is the office hours. Some students stay in office, uh, come to office at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock. Jonghyun, our teacher, teaching assistant, came to my office 8 o'clock in the morning. Actually, I came to my office 6.30 in the morning. I get up 5 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. I was like that. I'm a good student. 
if you come to office 11 o'clock in the morning, then you just check and go to the restaurant for lunch, and then time efficiency will be very bad. So this could be a uh, office hour, this could be a, a probability of good students, probably always every every student is good. This is not a good example. Uh, this is the score. For example, if you have bank deposit, let's assume this is a bank deposit. If you have bank deposit of $1 million, you may be regarded as a rich person. If you have bank deposit of $1, you may have a poor person. But depending on your age and your situation, this slope, actually this slope is determined by W and this bias point may be different. If you are living in United San Francisco, even though you have $1 million, you might be a poor person. But if you are 20 years old and you are living at Kais, if you have $1 million, you may have a rich person. So this slope and bias is totally determined by experience. So now, this is the first class of the semester, and I'm going to start with the basic uh, basics of perception. By putting them in serial and parallel, we can make a CNN or RNN or LSTM or diffusion model or uh, reinforcement learning with some feedback. So the most basic uh, building block of machine learning is, I said, perception. Perception has input vector and sets of weight and bias. This, because this input data has so many different uh, uh, data, so it is uh, free to choose, but this weight and bias should be determined. That is the purpose of training, and very, it takes a lot of computing power and resources. And the output of this vector summation, vector matrix, that a matrix is converted to a value between 0 to 1. Uh, because originally, machine learning is a kind of probability machine. That's why it usually has an output value from 0 to 1. And in order to achieve them, usually we are using sigmoid activation function. And this is sigmoid activation function. Even though real matrix calculation is very very complicated, I'm to you know to give you to give you basic concept. I'm going to uh, use scalastic representation. So multiplication of input vector and weight plus bias is inserted into exponential minus function of sigmoid function and the output is a value between 0 to 1. So major purpose of our training is to determine W and B. How are we going to do that? We are feeling, hitting this W and B iteratively to fit this out to fit to the real data. There are some uh, so how are we going to fit our W and B to real value? There are some certain mathematics methods. One of them is cost function. There are many different ways to define cost function. One of the simple way is mean square error. You repeat 
this uh, sigmoid function and matrix calculation until you minimize this cost function. Until your prediction given by the sigmoid function y minus y dot zero should be the difference should be as small as possible. So your training means training of machine learning means c minimum and you have to find weight and b for many different case of input vector x. This is not a single point. You may have many, many different cases to smooth out this sigmoid function and to be able to make as close as possible. Let's assume that For simplicity, I'm considering a parabolic uh, case, case where this is a shape of course as a function of W. You have to determine W, this W, to minimize this cost function. So you have, this might be a optimal weight. So machine learning training means that you have to find W vector, W vector to minimize the cost function. Initially, I'm saying that at this point, when you are starting to train your deep neural network, you initially guess. W1, W2, and W3. So in those cases, you may have different curve, but you have to bring this curve to the real data. How can you do that? You have to update W step by step until you reach a minimal point. That kind of algorithm is being called as gradient in an hour, today at the first class of the semester, I'm trying to give you the overall picture of the basic building block of machine learning, including for the propagation backward the propagation activation function and host function. I'm going to move a little bit deeper and deeper on Wednesday and next week. But rather than using very complicated uh, matrix notations, I'm going to use this kind of conceptual equations and conceptual diagrams. Mathematic if, you, if we go into more uh, rigorous mathematical representations, probably we cannot cover all these subjects in this uh, semester. So I'm trying to give you the basic uh, essential part of the concept of machine learning. Uh, this is the end of the class today. Uh, after the English class of one hour, I'm going to spend 10 more minutes to talk about Korean language.